Hey guys, what's up? Mad Season here, back with another video for you. BlizzCon 2016 is well underway, so I thought I'd make a video sort of very briefly covering all of the major World of Warcraft stuff. I'll start with what I think to be the biggest features coming up, and I'll work my way down towards the more minor ones. Some of these things are coming in the next major patch, 7.2, and some are coming in the more minor 7.1.5 patch. I'll indicate which on the top left-hand corner of the screen as I'm talking about them. Patch 7.2 does bring a new full-on raid. It's called the Tomb of Sargeras, and it'll hold 9 bosses total. For those of you not big on the lore, Sargeras is the leader of the Burning Legion, so it'll be really interesting to see what happens in here. And we also did get a preview of what's in store for us story-wise, and that's the fact that sometime in the future we'll be visiting Argus. This was the home planet of the Eridar before they succumbed to the corruption of the Burning Legion, and since then it's been implied that it's now the seat of power for the Burning Legion. So, some pretty exciting stuff is on the way. And for all of you dungeon runners out there, we do have a new dungeon coming out. It's called the Cathedral of the Eternal Night, and it's a pretty conventional dungeon. It'll have four bosses, and you'll be able to run it on all difficulties, including Mythic Plus. Dungeons in general are going to be continuously updated to keep them relevant. Both their difficulty and the level of their rewards will be increased. And some other big changes is the addition of the Arcway and the Court of Stars heroic modes, which will also be in the Dungeon Finder. The same thing will happen with Karazhan, although that's split up into two different parts due to its length. It'll also have Mythic Plus mode unlocked in 7.2. Speaking of Mythic Plus, we're also getting some new affixes. One of the neat things about this whole system is that it's so easy to add on to it, and affixes are one of the many ways they can update them to make them more interesting. And our artifact weapons are also getting updates. We'll have a handful of new traits, including a major one with a golden border, and all of your minor 3-point traits will go up to 4. In total, we'll be able to put in 15 more points. And to sort of supplement this, our max artifact knowledge will also be increased. You do need to unlock these traits by progressing through a quest chain though. And another nifty update is the introduction of relics that improve two traits instead of one. So overall, our artifacts are going to get way more powerful. We are also getting some updates on the visual side. Every artifact for every spec will be getting a new skin for you to unlock. No specifics yet, but they have stated that you get it solo, and they want it to represent mastery of your spec, so it'll be pretty difficult to obtain. They want it to be akin to the old Rock Delar Hunter quest, or the Anathema slash Benediction Priest quest, which sounds pretty interesting. Our Order Hall campaign will also continue, and along with it forms a new faction called the Armies of Legion Fall. This is a faction formed by the combined efforts of every class in their Order Halls. So story-wise, we'll be working together as this faction as we progress towards the Tomb of Sargeras. And to aid us with that, we'll apparently be building sort of a forward base. We'll get to choose what types of buildings we want to customize our assault and also our rewards. Depending on what buildings we choose, we can get different world quests, bosses, vendors, and so on. Lots of speculation about this. A lot of people's first thought is Garrison 2.0, but it'll actually be more similar to the Isle of Kualdanas assault back in the Burning Crusade. And from our new Order Hall campaign, we'll also be getting unique class-specific mounts. Shamans get an air elemental, rogues get a raven, paladins get another charger, monks get a tiger, warlocks get a new fell dreadsteed, hunters will get a wolf-eagle hybrid, mages get a hover disc, priests get a whatever the heck this is, warriors get an armored red drake, druids transform into this giant owl, demon hunters get a fell bat, and lastly death knights get a fell worm. Also, it has been confirmed that these mounts will change depending on what spec you are. It'll just be palette swaps to match your spec, but still, it's pretty neat. Now you may have noticed that some of these are flying. Well, in patch 7.2, we'll finally be able to fly in the Broken Isles. Part 2 of the Legion Pathfinder will be released, and once you complete this along with Part 1, you'll unlock it for every character on your account. Keep in mind that Part 1 is in the game right now, so you can knock that out in preparation for Part 2. I'll have a link to the achievement in the description. For Part 2 specifically, Blizzard has stated that you'll be able to complete it through doing stuff in the world, such as defending against new Legion assaults, completing your main Order Hall questline, leveling your new Legion Fall reputation, and opening the Tomb of Sargeras. Speaking of Legion Assaults, these are going to be similar to the pre-launch event for Legion. Throughout the five zones of the Broken Isles, the Legion will be invading, and you'll be fending them off for rewards. Each zone's invasion is unique, and they'll climax with a three-player scenario where we take out the commanding ship of the invasion. And also in patch 7.2, we'll be seeing some big updates for PvP, a major one being Brawls. If you've played Hearthstone or Overwatch, you're familiar with these already. These are going to be PvP battles with special sort of wacky rule sets. They're not meant to be balanced in any way. Just fun, chaotic things for you to do, pretty much. Some examples are the return of South Shore vs. Terran Mill, a Warsaw Gulch where you can cap flags without having your own flag at your base, a 15 vs. 15 arena, a Winter Arathi Basin where there's low visibility, an Eye of the Storm with altered gravity, and so on. The Brawler's Guild is finally seeing a return as well. Along with it comes new bosses as well as old ones. New rewards include shirts and a Basilisk mount. And another interesting thing is that per fight, there's a chance to summon a raid boss that everyone can attack. 
They're also adding a new currency, which you use to buy items that other people can interact with, such as a graveyard that spawns you right at the guild, an NPC who takes bets on who'll win the next fight, and so on. And stepping back into the world for a moment to add some variety, we'll also start seeing what they're calling micro-holidays. These are aimed to be short but sweet little events that you can participate in. Just one example of this is On Carriage Day, which will happen on the 22nd of January of each year. This is a callback to the old AQ40 opening ceremony, and on this date you can complete various objectives in Silithus, turn stuff in for your faction, and whichever faction has the most turn-ins will have their banner flown over the walls of On Carriage for a full year until the next event. So that's just one example. One thing they made very clear is that there won't be any achievements, pets, or mounts since they don't want you to feel like you missed out if you weren't able to log in for that day. You can take this as a positive or a negative, I guess. Personally, I don't mind it since I think these will just be fun things to do to break up the monotony, but I can see some people having issues with it. And that's pretty much it for all of the major stuff anyways. There is a lot more information, but it's more on the minor side. If you're curious, check out the various World of Warcraft news sites such as MMO Champion or Wowhead if you want to get all of the details. Anyways, I hope you found this video helpful. Give it a like if you liked it, and if you really liked it, let me know in the comments and subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching, good luck, and peace.